I have a quote from Romano Guardini. This is from his book, The Lord. And I like to remember it when I'm struggling or when I come across something that is difficult. And yet, the Father's will is the Father's love. Through his complete acceptance of it, Jesus entered into the intimacy of God where all things are luminous with his tenderness and power. This will is constantly forming directives for all needs as they present themselves. So when we go to our first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, and God says to the prophet, you are gonna be a sign for the people. And so I'm going to put things in your life so that people will see how you deal with them. And so his wife dies. God says, I don't want you to go into mourning because there are going to be terrible things that are going to happen to Israel and they're not going to have a chance to go into mourning. But I want them to turn back to me. And then in our gospel, the young man comes to Jesus. And we're going to skip over the, you know, why do you ask me what is good? Because that's a little, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. But he says, what must I do to enter into eternal life? And he says, keep the commandments. Now, most of the commandments are you shall not. You shall not kill, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness. And then there are two that are positive. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. So when he tells him which ones he should do, there are a number of things you shouldn't do, but then there are some things that you should do. So the young man says, I've observed this. He's a good observant Jew. He says, I follow the commandments. What must I do to be perfect? And then Jesus adds to this, because the Father's will for each and every one of us is that we should be perfect. And so he says, if you wish to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. Not just give everything you have to the poor and then keep doing what you're doing. Having your riches, having your many possessions, they are keeping you from following me. Now please know, in the early Christian church, they don't tell everybody to go and sell everything that they have. This is not God's path for everyone. But it is for some. St. Ignatius of Loyola says that we are all called to poverty. Some, a poverty of spirit, to empty our wills so that we can accept the will of the Father as Jesus did. And essentially that means accepting not only his will, but his love. His will is an expression of his love. Some people are called to full poverty. Uh, we have a parishioner, Matthew Mancino, who's gone off and joined the Franciscans. He has a, a vocation to poverty. Most of us have a spiritual poverty. Do we accept God's will? And yet the Father's will is the Father's love. One of the versions of this story in the, uh, in the gospel says that Jesus looked at him with love. So Jesus says this as an act of love. Through his complete acceptance of it, it here being God's love, 
or God's will, through his acceptance of it, Jesus enters into the intimacy of God. And again, that is God's plan. That we should be lifted up to share in, in the love life of the Trinity, the inner life of the Trinity, this intimacy where all things are luminous with his tenderness and power. This will is constantly forming directives. Please note, that last part is important. Constantly forming directives. As I go through my day, I want to ask myself, and if, you, if you're like me, I forget this for long periods of time, what does God want me to do? Not what does Joe want to do, what is God's will for me, all right? So God's will or God's love is constantly forming directives for me in all needs as they present themselves. And so we are like the prophet. We are like that young man. What do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to do next? <laughs>